Hello and welcome back to Colonial Airstream. I'm Patrick Botticelli. For 2020, Airstream announced the all new Caravel series. It comes in a 16RB, 19CB, 20FB, and a 22FB floor plan. Today we're going to feature the all new 2020 Airstream Caravel 22FB floor plan. It is 21 foot 11 inches from the center of the ball to the back bumper of the trailer. It's nine foot seven tall, giving you interior headroom of six foot seven and a half inches. It's eight foot wide and an interior width of seven foot seven inches. The unloaded vehicle weight before cargo and water is 4,000 pounds. The gross vehicle weight rating is 5,000 pounds and gives you a net cargo carrying capacity of 1,000 pounds. And the hitch weight is only 525 pounds. Base MSRP, is 69.9 and there's available options a convection microwave upgrade a solar charging system with 90 watt panel and absorbed glass mat batteries and a window awning package for the roadside and rear let's head on inside and we'll check out the inside of this trailer this is the largest of the Car caravel series and it features the largest bed that bed is a 54 inch wide by 80 inch long bed and this bed here is 38 by 75. So this is designed for four people. It could be two kids and two adults, three adults, or you could, you could snug two adults on here if you needed to. Right when you walk in, you'll see the beautiful autumn night laminate. This is all plywood with laminate, so there's no particle board or no sticker. And you'll see there's two different interior decors when you look at the brochure or the website. We're in the tungsten right now, which is a satin or a matte black. Uh, this is called Ultra Fabrics Fusion, so it's our Ultra Leather Series in the Fusion finish. But there's also a pewter, which will be more of a brown tone with a little bit of gold metallic. So those are your two choices for interior decor. So all the caravels are going to have the autumn night. And you can see the accent, there's a white laminate on the kitchen galley area and the overhead roof lockers. Wardrobe is very spacious and uh, there's a shelf up top. You have a 4.3 cubic foot refrigerator here. And this refrigerator runs on electricity or 12 volt. Galley has a television on an articulating arm, so you can angle it while you're sitting at the dinette. It has a three burner cooktop with cooktop ventilation. Comes standard with a regular microwave, where you get that optional convection microwave upgrade. Beautiful large bowl stainless steel sink with Moen faucet. Plenty of storage below with a Civil War organizer here and a trash pail as well. The 54 by 80 inch bed is a pillow top memory foam mattress. And the whole bed platform lifts up to gain you access or you can open the door here and get your bins out. So there's four bins total in here. And you can see the edge grain of the plywood. So if you're ever guessing whether what material is underneath this laminate, if you lift up the bed, you can see the edge grain of the plywood to know that this is three quarter inch ply and uh, this is a five eighth inch ply. So uh, very high quality materials, very stable materials. You have an overhead roof locker over the bed area and there's four speakers uh, and a subwoofer on board. Over the galley area, there's a Blu-ray player and a stereo system. And then this dinette telescopically pushes down and makes into that 38 by 75 inch bed. 13,500 BTU ducted air conditioning is standard. This has electric heat strip as well. And the Forset Air Propane Furnace is 18,000 BTUs. Comes standard with two fantastic fans with rain sensors and motorized lids. We'll head towards the bathroom. This is the whole back of the trailer. So it's its own private room. So it's very close and convenient to the entry door if you want to, if you're outside cooking outside, you want to run and use the bathroom, you don't have to go through the whole entire trailer. It's right here. Very thick door, very heavy door. It's got a towel bar on the back. You got a porcelain toilet here on the side. Plenty of storage next to the toilet. Below here, we got your toilet paper holder. Window that opens in the bathroom, ocean or roller shades. Got a mirror with adjustable angles and a glass shower door. And this shower is very large, a five foot nine, and I could fit in here. And I got these big tall boots on, 
but the shower has a ledge built into it so you could sit down and a removable wand. Now I showed you a little bit about the overall of the interior of this floor plan. I'm going to go in a little bit more detail on how things work in this trailer. I'm going to start right here in the shower. You got a mowing diverter here. This detaches from the wall and once you get your desired temperature you could pause and you could lather up and then uh, once you're ready to rinse off you just turn this on and your temperature is still set where you had it. You can rinse off and that helps conserve water on board and this just hangs up here on the side. There's a clothesline in the shower you pull across and hook that on and you can hang light items like bathing suits I wouldn't do anything really heavy on here um, and then once you're ready to roll it back in you undo this and it rolls back and there's an ABS plastic material with an overlap you just want to maintain your caulk seams just like you would at home and the bottom pan is a fiberglass pan and the shower door, when it swings shut, it's got a magnetic strip to keep it shut. But there's also a latch, a travel latch there. And then on this side, you could put some shampoo there. And then there's a drain on the bottom and a drain plug. So if the trailer is not completely level, the water might not exactly drain down the drain. So you'll know right away if you need to level the trailer out if the water is not going down the drain. But it's best practice to leave this drain plug in when you're towing. So when you hit bumps, the P-trap water doesn't dissipate. You don't get any gray tank odor inside the trailer. In this cabinet, <clears throat> you can hang your toilet paper here. Colonial Airstream gives you some toilet paper to get started. You want to make sure it's septic tank safe, RV marine safe, uh, before you start using it in the trailer. These are your drop-in, toss-in tank deodorizers. Uh, you flush one pod down the toilet per 18 gallons of waste. So after you empty and discharge the black tank, you can treat the next dose. And then Airstream gives you uh, some uh, liquid form of that. So just follow instructions here. Just be careful. This is uh, corrosive, um, so you don't want to spill it on anything. Beautiful sink here. This is all stainless steel with a mowing faucet. And you turn on, off hot cold. This mirror also has a magnification built into it and that latches back when you're towing. The window in the bathroom, when you close it, it would lock like this and you want to make sure you check all your windows before you tow. But when you want to open it, you lift evenly both hands. You got a low setting, middle, and high. And if you want a little bit of privacy, you could hook this shade underneath, or you could bring it all the way around. And you can see that inside of the trailer, the skin is exposed, so there's a, a equal bad insulation between the inside skin and the exterior skin. And everything that's in this trailer was hand carried through that entry door. So they build the trailer first, they hand carry all these aluminum pieces inside with the insulation, and they riveted them in place, and they hand carry all the furniture inside. And, and put those in place. So none of the furniture has anything to do with structural integrity of the shell. The shell is just as strong now as it would be if we took everything out of it. Over here we have storage next to the toilet, a little ledge on the counter, and then the way this toilet operates is you put your foot partially on the pedal and that will open the water valve and allow you to fill the bowl up to your desired height you choose which height you would like and when you want to flush you push all the way down and now we'll flush the toilet and when you let go you're going to have an inch or two of water so it's always a good idea after you uh, get ready to leave the campground make sure your water pumps off but drain down the toilet bowl because you don't want water splashing around over the walls of your trailer down on the floor here we have a furnace duct so when you have your forced head air propane 18,000 b2 furnace on it's going to duct heat into this compartment this box here is where the black tank is underneath. Uh, the furnace duct also has a duct that goes into that chamber to heat that as well. You have your seal light switch. These are LED lights with two elements, so you could shut one or both off up here, or you could use the wall switch. And then on this wall, we have a lot of your system controls. Uh, for one of them is the solar uh, display. So this has the optional solar charging system. Uh, it shows your battery percentage remaining. You could change it to battery voltage, solar voltage, solar charge amps, 
solar amp hours, and then you'll see that we are charging right now. Our chatter charging status is showing that we're charging. So you could change the different settings to see your, uh, uh, your status on each one of those items. Below that is the Sea Level 2 tank monitor. It comes standard with the regular battery monitor, 12.5%. Uh, this would be only when you get the solar charging system. To also check your freshwater tank, your gray waste tank, and your black. So the flesh is 27 gallons. Right now we're at 0%. What's nice about this system is it's in percentages from 1 to 100. Most tank monitoring system and RVs are based on quarters or thirds, so you don't, really don't get a precise reading on inside your tank. On this system, you do. So the 27 gallon freshwater tank, that's empty. The gray waste, which is just sink and shower, 28 gallon, that's completely empty. And the black waste, which is 18 gallons, that's completely empty. So if it was completely full, it'd say 100%. Water pump switch is housed in this uh, control as well. So when we're not hooked up to the city water connection, when we want to utilize our freshwater tank, I turn on the water pump. The pump will come on, you see the green light, and that would pressurize the system, pressurize all your plumbing lines. Once you turn on a faucet, it would feel a drop in pressure and kick the pump on automatically. And the pump would run until it pressurizes again. It's never recommended to leave the water pump on if there's no water in the freshwater tank because that will run continuously and burn the pump out over time. Below this, we have the water heater controls. The water heater is a six gallon reservoir, but it gives you nine gallons continuous flow of hot water using a mixer valve. So it preheats the water before it brings it into the tank and superheats it. So it gets extremely hot water. To use it on propane, this is the propane side, you flip any of these switches up that will turn on either one of the elements. So if you want on gas, you flip that up, the water heater will go through its ignition procedure. If for some reason it misfires, if you're out of propane or got air in a propane, this red light will come on and stay on to warn you to let you know the water heater misfired. So most people would think naturally that if the red light's on, that means the water heater's on. So if they don't see the red light on, they don't think the water heater's on. It's the opposite. It only comes on if there's a problem. This is the electric side. So if you're plugged into shore power or a generator, you could turn on the electric element in the water heater just by flipping this switch up here, and that will heat the, the hot water in the tank. Not as fast as the propane will, but it will uh, heat it in just a small amount more of time. And then we'll shut those off. So you don't need to leave those on if the trailer is unoccupied. And if you turn them on, wait about 15 to 20 minutes, and you'll have hot water for a shower. This is the light for the bathroom. <clears throat> Out here by... <clears throat> The wardrobe, <clears throat> I could show you the owner's bag that comes with the trailer, has all the owner's manuals for all the components that come with the trailer, as well as the owner's manual for the Airstream and a newbie's guide to owning an Airstream from a third party author. author. The light inside the wardrobe has a switch on it that helps illuminate this compartment. There's an access panel for some of the plumbing for the toilet area that if a technician needed to get to, they could open it up. The wardrobe rod has notches built into it, so when you're closed, when you're driving, they don't keep gathering and falling down, that will keep them gripped. This floor can lift up, and it gains you access if you needed to get to your water pump. You can see the black tank here and all the fittings here, your city water connection, the black tank flush, the outside utility shower. This is how a technician could get to all these items for repair. There's also two low point drains here that when you're doing your winterization procedure it's going to ask you to open they're located in this compartment as well so i don't recommend storing anything here it's a service access point only all the hardware here on the doors this is premium european style hinges the hinges are detachable if you undo the clip here in the back and if you take this cap off you could make several adjustments so if you wanted to re-square up the door or bring it out or in you can make all those adjustments here beautiful hardware here this is a matte black cabinet handle that they do for the uh, caravel series we have another furnace duct here down on the floor this is a propane leak detector this is constantly monitoring air quality in this trailer if it senses a propane leak this will uh, alarm you and it's best practice to exit the trailer shut the propane off and find the source of the leak but it is pretty uh, sensitive so it will go off if you spray anything aerosol by it sometimes uh, pets laying next to it will, will set it off but you want to keep this area clear 
especially this area here. This is the battery converter charger. The battery charger on here gets pretty warm and there's a fan that kicks on. You don't want to keep items against this because it'll overwork the battery charger. This is a multi-stage battery charger, so it's safe for your batteries, but it also houses your electrical breakers. So there's a 30 amp coming in and then it distributes a different 20 and 15 amp outlets, which are all labeled here or uh, components. There's also a GFCI protect electrical outlet circuit. That's for your bathroom, kitchen, outside outlets, your refrigerator outlet, all the wet areas of the trailer has a GFCI. So if one of those outlets did get wet, it would trip right here in this compartment and you just reset it right back here. And you could also do a test as well. This converts AC current into DC current, which is battery power, 12 volt. So we can power our lights, our fans, our radio, our water pump. And those all have their little automotive ATC fuses, anywhere from 15, 20, 1 amp, and 30 amps, as well as some 40s here. They're all labeled here on the side. So if one of those fuses was to burn because of a short or overheating it, there's an LED light, a red LED light that will illuminate next to each one to let you know which one blew and then you uh, make your diagnosis of what happened and replace the fuse with the same size. The refrigerator is a Novacool 4.3 cubic foot. This is a compressor style refrigerator so main advantages are it uses less power to run. There's no exterior venting required, so you don't have vent crates on the outside of the trailer. And they're deeper, they're much deeper. So a lot of people look at the door and think it's a small refrigerator compared to other types of RVs, but once they go inside, they see the depth in here, and then they understand what the advantage is. There's a dial on the inside to turn it on or off or check your temperature settings, and the top portion is a freezer, and it comes with an ice cube tray. And there's plenty of storage on the door. It's always a good idea to turn this on a day before you travel because it'll take extremely long time to remove all the heat, pull all the heat out of the refrigerator. Uh, so let it run for five to six hours and it should be at a temperature which is safe for your food. And you can leave it on when you're driving because your tow vehicle's 12 volt charge lead, which is highly recommended to install, will charge your batteries. And then this trailer equipped a solar charging system though that solar system will charge the batteries when you're driving on the highway. There's a latch here that allows the door to stay shut if you're parked on level, but then there's a road latch when you're towing to keep this door from flying open as well. So you get the double latch system. The 13,500 BTU air conditioning with electric heat strip and the furnace are all operated off of this comfort control center. So I could turn the system on, I could toggle through different items like cool, that would be air conditioning. I could check, I can change my temperature. Now I'm not plugged into electric right now, so none of this is gonna work, but I just want for demonstration purposes. The zone, there's only one zone in this trailer, so you don't have to worry about switching zones. Fan, we're on auto, so if we have it set to 66 degrees, that fan will click on and off as it needs to get to your temperature. So once it reaches your temperature, the compressor and the fan will shut off and then kick back on when it needs to turn back on to get your temperature. You could change the fan from low, medium, or high, and that will continuously run the fan and the compressor will kick on and off as the temperature calls. Mode, I could change from cool to auto. So now if I set my temperature, it will either use uh, the heat, heat strip or it will use air conditioning to get you to pop proper temperature. So, you know, if it gets really cold at night, it's going to turn on the heat. If it gets really hot during the day, it's going to turn on the air conditioning. The next mode is the, the electric heat strip and the air conditioning. Then we have furnace. The furnace is down below the kitchen galley sink area and that duct work goes all underneath all the cabinets and down to your tanks. There's no fan speed on that. That's one speed. But you could manually, if you wanted to, in that mode, you could turn the fan on to uh, low, medium, or high. It'll run your furnace and the fan blowers inside the air conditioner to help circulate air around the trailer. And then you could set a program, you could set your clock, you could change it from Fahrenheit to Celsius, and then you could also check your inside temp as well. The TV has a, a nylon cord you pull down, and that allows the TV to articulate out. Uh, this is an LED style television. It's hooked into an HDMI port here in the wall, which is tied into your Blu-ray player. Electrical outlet here, which is also an inverter outlet. So this trailer has a 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter. And I'm going to use this uh, electrical outlet tester 
Airstream gives an electrical outlet tester to all their owners that uh, buy brand new 2020 Airstreams, which is a good idea. When you plug into a campground's electrical service, you don't know if they have open neutral, wires crossed on their end, and things might not seem to operate properly in the trailer. You could just use this tester and plug into any outlet and it'll illuminate, it should illuminate to amber here, but if any other sequence, it'll let you know there's a problem with the wiring. There's also a GFCI tester here too. If you plug this into um, one of your GFCI outlets and you press this button, it will shoot it out and, and pop the breaker inside the trailer for testing purposes only. I'm gonna utilize this to demonstrate how the inverter powers. So right now I do not have the inverter on. So I'm gonna plug this electrical outlet tester into an inverter circuit. And then I'm gonna turn the inverter on. And in about 10 seconds, that inverter is gonna take your stored battery juice and invert it into electricity for this outlet. And that's a 1000 watts. So no toasters, hair dryers, none of the high consumable items. You have to check the wattage on the item, but it'll be good for TV, laptop, computer. So now I'm inverting elect and making electricity off my battery system. Even though I don't have anything else plugged into this outlet, it's still draining down the battery, even though I'm not using the electric. So it's only for point of use, for a temporary amount of time when you want to use an item when you're not plugged into electricity. You want to make sure that you do shut this off when you're done so you don't drain the battery system down. And you don't need that on to power this outlet when you're plugged into shore power at a campground or home. This outlet will be powered when you're plugged in without turning this on. Television's plugged into a coax cable here. There's a coax cable inlet we'll see outside later when we go outside. And there's an antenna on the roof that you might be able to see later when we go outside. But in order to power the over-to-air antenna and get digital and high-def reception, we have to turn the antenna on using this 12-volt booster. Press this button, there's a little green light that will illuminate next to it. Now it's powering up that antenna to boost the signal for the television. Then I could go into the mode settings and scan to see what channels I could get in in my current situation. When you're done using the television antenna, you have to shut the antenna booster off for two reasons. One, it will drain your battery pretty quickly. And two, if you're hooked into cable at a campground, it will distort your signal if you have that turned on as well. <clears throat> TV, you want to make sure that's secure when you're towing. Just lock it in place, make sure it latches so this doesn't swing around as you're towing. The ducted air conditioning system has two intake grates here, and these have filters built into them. You want, always want to visually check and pull down your filters, make sure they're not clogged, because if they are, it's not going to allow enough airflow through, and it's going to overwork your air conditioning and could potentially harm it or cause it to fail early. So you take the four screws out on each side, clean the filters out, let them dry, and put them back in place. The QuietStream air conditioner ducted versus central, like on the Bambi model, the base camp and the nest, is a little bit quieter and a little bit more efficient because it's bringing and distributing air in a longer area, which helps keep the noise level down, but also gives you even temperatures throughout the trailer. But you can change the angle of these vents by spinning them around. There's different louvers here. And then you could shut off certain vents. So if you wanted to dedicate most of the air conditioning to go to one area of the trailer, you could shut down certain vents. This is a speaker as part of the stereo system. This is one of the two fantastic fans that come standard. So you can manually open the lid, and you can manually close the lid, or once you set your speed, one, two, or three, and decide if you want the fan blade on or off, you can hit open lid button here. And the lid will open. There's a little button that pops up that will kick the fan on. These are exhaust only. This is what you're going to use when you're using the shower or the toilet. Leave this on to uh, exhaust uh, stale air out and steam out. And then you can set your thermostat setting. So here's our room temperature. Wow, we're right at, uh, we're above the room temperature. So this is going to keep running until it gets below our temperature right now. But I can set it all the way down to all the way cool and it'll run all day long. I could bring the fan speed down to one, just low. And you always have to make sure you have enough window, window or screen open when you're operating these fans. They pull such a large volume of air out of the trailer that they can starve for air. So you want to make sure you have enough ventilation. You also, there's a quick release screen on here that you can pop the screen out if you want to clean the fan blades or the screen down. And when you're all done, you can hit close lid. 
Now, if it started raining right now, there's a rain sensor built in that if a raindrop hits it, it will short it out and shut the lid down automatically for you. And then when you're done, you just have to reset it and hit open lid to, to come back up once it starts raining. And then there's a fuse here, which is sacrificial. If the fan blade got stuck, instead of burning the motor out, the fuse will pop to protect it. And this just comes out for replacement if needed. Over here on the dinette, there's a storage behind for a boot. There's a boot tray storage here that you can kick off your shoes when you get in. And then there's storage underneath. So you can get to the same storage area above it and you could store items. This is big enough I could put a pillow in there or other items. And there's one here and there's one on the opposite side. And then this portion here is where the wheel well cuts in. So picture the bed of a pickup truck. Uh, the wheel well is cut into the bed. Well, the same thing here in the body. This is such a low center of gravity trailer, the wheel well is cut right into the body. But this makes into that 38 by 75 inch bed I mentioned before. And, wh and what's cool about this dinette is it slides out, and you can lock it in place if you don't want it to slide, but it slides out so you can get in here easily and sit down, enjoy the television or watch the kitchen area, get that beautiful panoramic view out front. I could spin the table around and change the angle if I wanted a view out this way. And uh, you could sit four people around this dinette because of the U-shape. But to make it into a bed, we have to undo both these clamps. And this table is now telescopic. So it's easier to pull it all the way out <clears throat> and then work the table in underneath the cushions. And then push down, lock it in place. And then the back rest here and the back rest here squeeze together. And then you can leave these against the wall. I have some people that angle them up and like sit back like a chaise lounge or you could store these underneath here on either side <clears throat> and it makes it to a quite large bed I'm five foot nine you know, I've got my boots on and everything but I could I could sleep here and if I tuck in make it cozy you could have another adult next to you so it's a very usable bed but they use premium foam and all their uh, cushion material so it's, it's a very comfortable bed if you compare it to other brand RVs. And the type of work they do on the stitching is very impressive. There's even holes in it that allows the air to come out when you compress the cushion down. And then when you're ready to bring the bed back up, <clears throat> once you put your sheets and bedding away and extra pillows, slide these out tuck this into the corner and there's velcro that keeps everything together bring the table out undo the clamps and work it out bring one side bring it above and do the other side and then you clamp it down and lock it in place there's a window here next to the dinette that you just pull the handles twist and you got to lift evenly and look how far out that goes it goes all the way out just be mindful if you have it open all the way when you're walking around outside they remember the windows all open because if you're the right height you could smack your head and you got plenty of privacy here as well the cooktop three burners you select ignite hold that in it will spark ignite that burner you got one in the middle and one here on the side. And these grates are removable that allows for easy cleaning. This is the vent for the refrigerator cabinet, just for any heat that builds up inside it could escape. You got a cooktop ventilation with a nice bright LED light. You got a filter here in the back and the fan. And we're gonna see when we go outside later, there's an exhaust louver that you have to open to vent this outside. GFCI protected electrical outlet. Ocean Air Roller Shade that hooks onto these little tabs behind the sink. And these are porthole style windows, so these don't open. Sink covers you could use as cutting board if you need to. But beautiful sink. Really deep, really wide, stainless steel, thick gauge. Quality stuff here. Mowing faucet pulls out. You got a different spray pattern here. Above the sink, there's an LED light with two elements that so you could turn on and off. 
regular microwave here. You'll have to be plugged into electricity to utilize. It has a carousel. And then there's also that convection microwave upgrade that occupies the same space that you could get. This flips down and gives you access right up to where the wheel well starts. This panel here is removable for service access for a technician to get in for the furnace. This is your furnace intake, so you don't want to block this area. Cabinet here gives you access to your plumbing, a waste pail, bulk storage, and ut uh, utensil tray as well. And nice laminate here over plywood with a soft edge on all these edges so it's not sharp when you put your hands on them. Look how wide this aisle is. In the previous model year, the 22 FB floor plan was available in the Sport Bambi series. For 2020, it's available in the Caravelle and the Bambi series. But the trailer went from 7 foot 4 and a half inches wide to 8 foot wide. And you can see it all right here in the aisle. So now if you have pets traveling with you, there's a little bit more floor space to get around the pet versus the narrow aisle we had in previous model years. Storage above in these overhead roof lockers. Another storage here, and you can see it's trimmed out in aluminum. Sony Blu-ray player has a USB input built into it, and this is plugged into an inverter circuit up top. JL Audio system is a very impressive sound system, which is also Bluetooth as well. And then if you want the stereo on, but you don't want the lights flashing, you can put this little cover on. This outlet is uh, utilized for the Blu-ray, but there's also enough room if you wanted to plug other devices in with a splitter. Backup camera that comes standard on all traditional travel trailers since 2019. Has a box that it comes with, but there's a camera we'll see later when we go outside. But this is the camera out of the box. Now I just have it stored in here. It doesn't get mounted in here, but uh, I just wanted to put it somewhere. So it's suction cups to your windshield on your tow vehicle. And then you plug this into a 12 volt power port in your vehicle. And when you turn the camera on and turn your parking lights on your vehicle, it'll give you rear view vision. Uh, so it's very extremely handy. And um, it makes it a safer towing experience, more comfortable towing experience for the Airstream owners. Most uh, cars and trucks now have uh, backup cameras, so Airstream decided to standardize it on their traditional series travel trailers. There's a translucent panel here to separate the bedroom area from the living area. And then there's a privacy curtain that pulls across and uh, it's on a little track here on the ceiling. And it's two piece, so you can come down the middle. Uh, but that really gains you a little bit of privacy in the bedroom area. If you want to get changed, you don't want to close all your blinds out or you want some privacy some, from some family members. And this is Velcro's back when you're done uh, utilizing it, just so it doesn't uh, work its way out when you're towing. Okay. Below this dinette booth is the other storage compartment, and there's an electrical outlet with an inverter circuit built in under the dinette as well. Earlier we saw how this bed lifts up. <clears throat> you can lift it up and it gains you access to the back of the water heater. There's a bypass valve built into it for winterization that you could reach. And there's an access panel here to get you to your inverter system if that ever needed uh, service. The bins, the four bins that come with it are easily carried into the house. You could load your items inside of them and carry them back into the trailer. And then this door is a really big door. You could detach it if you just wanted the storage to be open here. But people rave about the Airstream mattress. It's a pillow top memory foam, extremely comfortable. Not too many people go out and buy an upgraded mattress aftermarket because of that. But the bed being 54 by 80 is very spacious for two adults. People love the panoramic view that you get while you're lying in bed. And they give you these blackout curtains that pull all across. It's two-piece curtain system. There's directional reading lights, LED over the bed, and one here and one there. And then down here on the floor, there's a furnace duct that uh, heats that allows you to duct heat into the bedroom. And then we have a pri uh, privacy curtain that covers the emergency exit if you wanted to get some privacy here. And that snaps in nice and neat. But once you get it back, you could use these straps here to keep it open. These are the extra details that Airstream thinks of to help manage your uh, privacy. 
emergency exit, pull the two red handles, twist, lift evenly, both hands, lock it in place. And then if you need to get out, you can pull this. It's a sacrificial screen. It unravels the screen so you can climb out of the trailer. But you could also utilize this as a venting window as well. So it's not just one purpose. The roof locker over to bed is very deep. You know, here's a pillow as an example that fits in here and the height. <clears throat> and bed pillows all come with this trailer. And at the head of the bed, with the extra width this floor plan has for the new model year, there's a headboard incorporated with additional storage. So it's big enough, again, to give you an idea, you know, it's pretty wide back here, but it comes with this lid. Another window that opens all the way out. And then there's USB charge port, an inverter circuit, and your bedroom lights, the dimmable lights that are in here, you can control right from this switch here. And then there's a storage pocket here. You can put uh, magazines in if they fit. And at this side of the bed, there's another USB charge port here as well. And then this curtain pulls all the way around. So I think we covered most of the interior. There's one more item I want to cover, and then we're going to head outside. I'm going to show you how everything works on the outside. Check this out. This is another fantastic fan, but the difference with this one is it has a shade because it's more of a bedroom area that will help shade this area down inside the trailer. And then you can see here there's uh, smoke and carbon dioxide detectors that with 9 volt batteries. You got to check them periodically. I change them out every six months. And there's also a fire extinguisher by the entry door that you want to change out periodically. Dry erase board. You could write, uh, you could write items here. You got a magnet that comes with, and then you could tape pictures and put them on magnets here. You got uh, coat hooks, an access panel for the shower faucet if it ever needed to be swapped out or repaired. You will see a light switch here when you turn it on and off and you hold it and you can dim the lights down or brighten them back up. And then the awning, when we pull the awning out, you're gonna see there's an LED light strip underneath the awning. We can turn that on and off and dim it from here. Then we go outside later also, you're gonna see a step light by the entry door. That's to turn the step light on and off. But over here, one last thing I wanna show you, this is a battery disconnect. So instead of manually shutting the batteries down, we have an electronic switch that shuts the batteries down using a solenoid. So when you're done using the trailer and after you turned down each individual item, turn everything off, just in case you left something on, you can hit the battery disconnect and that will shut down the battery completely. Now, there's certain things that will still be powered, your propane leak detector and your electric hitch jack, but everything else will be shut off. And it's always a great idea is before you plug the trailer into your tow vehicle, a generator or shore power, or you want to do anything in the trailer, first thing you do is turn this back on. That turns the battery system back on in the trailer so you can utilize the trailer. Uh, let's uh, head outside. I want to show you this entry door and a lot of other cool things, including this handle. Beautiful polished aluminum entry door grab handle. Aluminum Thule step. You can push in and out with your foot, or you can do it by hand. Extruded aluminum door frame, TIG welded on the corners here. There's an angled piece of aluminum that allows you sweep the floor out from the inside. This is the Airstream welcome mat you get. The floor is tongue and groove, plywood with an outdoor uh, exposure rating. It has anti-wicking substance painted to the whole perimeter. So if you left the door open and it was raining out and you got a little bit of water on top of the floor and it rolled underneath, the floor wouldn't wick it through. It'll actually repel and drip it out of the belly pan. Screen door is detachable from the entry door. It's got TIG welded here, stainless steel hinge with six rivets, heavy duty gasket to keep it closed and secure so bugs don't get in. It attaches to the main entry door. Screen door guards come on the Caravel series. Has that signature bank vault shut. They love that sound. Extruded aluminum gutter rail over the entry door. So if sheathing rain could run around the door. Then you have beautiful polished aluminum entry door hinges, top and bottom. Very secure entry door lock with separate key. Deadbolt lock as well with the separate key. 
And when the door opens all the way, it latches to the body so the wind doesn't pull around. But beautiful craftsmanship here on the entry door. Uh, I love uh, explaining the entry door uh, just because there's about eight man hours in each door, a whole shift at Airstream's factory just to build one entry door. And uh, if you look over to the left of the door, we have an outside GFCI protected electrical outlet. So this outlet's only going to work when you're plugged into shore power at a campground or a portable generator. There's an LED step light here by the entry door. Below the trailer, it's all wrapped up in aluminum. So you got aluminum belly pan. It looks similar to the sides of the trailer, but it allows a little bit of gaps for some airflow so your underbelly could breathe. All the Airstream uh, traditional travel trailers have heated tanks in that enclosed underbelly. So as long as your force head air propane furnace system's on, it's going to boost the temperature inside the tank for unexpected drops in temperatures when you're doing some cold weather camping. If you get below freezing at night, you could turn the uh, furnace on. That will protect you. It gives you about a seven degree boost in the tank. There's heavy duty stabilizer jacks all four corners of the trailer. We're going to see one go down when we get to the other side. LED running lights. It's always recommended to turn your parking lights on when you're towing the travel trailer. The parking lights will also power the wireless backup camera. Now we saw the monitor when we were inside, but this is the actual camera that gives you the rear view vision. So you can leave that on when you're driving so you can get a view of the cars behind you or uh, items that are behind you when you're backing up. Uh, but you do need your parking lights on to do so. This trailer has the window awning package. It's all umbrella material. This is the rear window awning. <clears throat> it has a tether here that Velcro's up so it doesn't swing around in the wind. When you're ready to put the awning in, you're going to pull down, lift these around, and let the awning, it's spring-loaded, roll up. You can see it's metal-wrapped when it's up to protect it. You got the beautiful Airstream lettering here on the back of the trailer. This is the bathroom window we're inside. We, we saw this window here. This is uh, what it looks like on the back. Double stacked LED taillights, rear bumper storage. Lift these up, lift the lid up. There's plenty of room in here for blocks of wood, wheel chocks, power cords, anything that you're gonna put on the ground that could get muddy or wet or dirty. You don't wanna wrap it up and put it in your uh, nice clean storage compartment on the inside of the trailer, you want to put it out here. Uh, this is not weatherproof, uh, so it could get dusty and wet and dirty, but the items that you're putting in here, it doesn't really matter if they do get dirty. Beautiful polished aluminum rear bumper. You come around this side, you can see the extruded aluminum belt rind protection with insert. This is your rub rail protection here on the bottom. The stabilizer jacks are meant to take the bounce out of your walk, so when you're walking around inside, you don't want the trailer to move. You could take the tool that comes with the trailer and crank down your jacks. And you could also do with a cordless drill with a 19 millimeter or three quarter inch socket. But you're not leveling the trailer at this point. This is just merely stabilizing the trailer. If you want to level the trailer, you could use your electric hitch jack up front, level the trailer up and down this way. You could purchase and utilize leveling blocks. They look like a Lego. It's plastic. You stack them up. You put them on the ground. You back the trailer up on one side, and that will kick that side of the trailer up. And these will stabilize you once you get parked. Just be mindful. Do your checklist before you leave the campground. You want to make sure everything's secure, including making sure these stabilizer jacks are all the way up before you use your electric hitch jack. Because if you lift the front of the trailer up, these go down, you can bury them into ground and bend them. So uh, just follow your checklist in the owner's manual. You can download the Airstream Care or To-Go app, which has a checklist in there as well. It's a little bit more interactive. Moving up a little bit, let me grab the waste hose out of the waste hose storage tube that's below the trailer. Colonial Airstream gives you a 10-foot premium waste hose and there's room in there for a 10 foot extension if you decide you want a longer piece. We're going to take this and bring it over to the gray and black tank discharge. The freshwater tank in this trailer is 27 gallons. 
And once the freshwater tank leaves the freshwater tank, it's either going to go into a gray or black tank. Gray is your sink and shower waste, black is your toilet waste. So uh, what you want to do is put on some nice gloves if you used the trailer once before. Take this cap off and it fits very secure. You might get a residual drip out, not the end of the world. Then you're going to take your waste hose and snap it on nice and secure. Okay. Once you get that there, you could uh, you have a few options. Air, Colonial Airstream gives you an angled end with a clear elbow. And this snaps onto the waste hose, make sure that's nice and secure. And you can either screw it into the campground's different uh, threaded adapters, or you could use the donut we give you. And you slip your hose into there, get a nice tight connection. And then you could empty your waste. So it's best practice to empty the black tank first. That's 18 gallons on this trailer. You pull this straight out. Now all the waste that's in the black tank, toilet paper and solids will come through your waste hose. Once that's done, you'll see nothing else flowing through. You can close the black tank. Then you're gonna open up your gray tank, which is your sink and shower waste. And that will help flush out your hose with all the soapy water to help clean it. So when you put it away in storage, you don't have any sewage inside of it. Then you close that valve when you're done. Then what you would do is you take this hose and lift up on this end to get any, uh, any of the waste out before you carry it away down into the uh, dump station at the campground. Now, to take it one step further, after you're done using the trailer and you're going to put it away in storage, it's a really good idea to utilize your standard black tank flush. So you take the cap off and you're going to use a regular garden hose. Don't want to mix up your freshwater hose with a regular garden hose. Screw that on. Before you turn the water on, you want to reopen your black tank when the hose is connected. And inside the tank, there's a wand under pressure. It'll spray the walls of the tank down to get all that residual waste out of the tank and through your waste hose. Let it run for five or 10 minutes. Uh, and then when you're done, shut the water supply off, disconnect the hose, put the cap back on, close this and then carry your waste hose up, draining any residual waste out of the waste hose. Uh, if you do that each and every time, you don't have to worry about coming back to your trailer and having a black tank odor. So I recommend uh, utilizing the black tank flush. Airstream gives you a angled adapter. So if you wanted to change the straight end to an angled, if you're going straight down into like a permanent campsite connection, uh, you could utilize this. We also give you some vinyl gloves to get started, a 25 foot freshwater drinking hose, and that would either go in two locations, your potable water fill or your city water connection. When you go to a campground and they have city water right at your site, you're going to take this hose out, take the cap off, screw the hose on on both sides and turn the water on. There's a water pressure regulator built right in here, so you don't have to worry about unexpected spikes in water pressure at the campground and any plumbing bursting inside the trailer. You're protected right here. You might want to do an inline water filtration system outside of the trailer. So between their connection and your connection, you could do an inline water filter on this hose. That way you're filtering everything in, that comes into your trailer with a particulate filter. The portable tank you're going to utilize when you're not at a campground and you want to add some water to the trailer, say if you're going to do some boondock camping or you want water in the tank while you're driving down the highway to pull over and use the bathroom really quick, you're going to use your key to unlock the door, take the cap off, take that same hose, hook up to a water connection, and stick it in here loose. Turn the water on low, you don't want it on full blast. Turn on low, allow the air to escape out of the tank, and then you could fill that tank, which is 27 gallons. So we got 27 gallons here, 28 gallons in the gray tank, and 18 gallons of waste in the black tank. So it's either going to go from here to one of those tanks, so you, you should never have all three of them filled. All right, so in order to use this tank and uh, have water pressure in the trailer, you're going to utilize the water pump with the water pump switch we saw when we were inside. Below the trailer here, right next to the waste hose storage tube, let me just uh, get this cap out of the way, there's a drain valve, and that will allow you to gravity drain down this tank. 
So if you're not going to be using the trailer for a while, you don't want water sitting in the trailer for a long period of time. You want to utilize this drain valve and gravity drain down the tank. And also, uh, you want to definitely follow your winterization procedure. We give you some tips on our hands-on orientation at our dealership, but there's a good guide in the owner's manual that, that will show you how to winterize your trailer uh, when you're not using it to evacuate all the water out of the plumbing system. Next to the city water connection, we have an outside utility shower. This is hot and cold water outside. It comes with a wand. You can hang it up here. And you got your uh, controls here for hot and cold. And this is good to hose down items that are outside that uh, might get a little bit dirty that you want to clean before you put them in storage. Hose yourself down, your pets, uh, whatever you want to utilize it for, it's, it's very handy to have. Next to that, we have the camp power cable and television connection. So if you go to a campground, you hook right into their coax cable, uh, or you could bring your own if they don't have one there. You want to use an outdoor rated coax cable. You hook it in on their side and hook it into your side of the trailer. And uh, you might need a, a cable box in order to do so. Some of the campgrounds will give you one. If you want to use satellite, you could buy a portable satellite dish. You hook that on the gr ground, you put the cable into the trailer, and you bring a satellite receiver, maybe one from home or a special one used for camping, and you can plug that in inside the trailer, and you could have satellite connection outside as well. And you can position the satellite dish to get the best signal possible. This is the 25-foot Marine Co. power cord that comes with the trailer. It's a 30 amp, 125 volt. And you plug it in, line up the prongs, twist, and then you could do the weather lock here. There's a red LED light that will illuminate when this uh, power cord's powered to the trailer. So if you're uncertain if you have power coming in, you could come and look at this light. And then the end of the cord is three prongs, and uh, this will plug right into a campground's 30 amp connection. And with this plugged in, you can utilize all the systems inside the trailer. Not all the systems at once, but all the systems are operational. You definitely need 30 amp if you want to run your rooftop air conditioner. You got a refrigerator on board, a battery charger, and you have uh, your microwave and electrical outlets all could run through here, but not all at once. When you're at home or you're at a campground that only has a 15 amp connection, Colonial Airstream gives you premium dog bone style a uh, power cord adapter that you can plug your 30 amp into and it will downgrade it to a regular 15 amp out like, like you have a home. With this you can do everything in the trailer except for run your rooftop air conditioner. It's too much amperage to run through a 15 amp outlet. Uh, it will pop your breaker in a home and it will also get very hot. We give you the premium adapter because the block adapters tend to get extremely hot and they actually weld themselves to your other power cord. Uh, so this is a little bit better of an upgrade. The 225-75 R15 Goodyear Endurance tires have a speed rating of 80 miles an hour and a maximum inflation of 80 PSI. So you want to be mindful and always check your tire pressure before you ever tow the trailer. So once you hook up the trailer and get your hitch all secure, you want to come over and you want to check your tire pressure. You don't want to forget the spare tire as well. If you ever were to remove a tire to do any type of maintenance or to change a tire, you want to follow lug nut torque specifications. After 10, 25, and 50 miles, you want to pull over and check to make sure that lug nut torque is secure. This is the Dexter axle with the Neverlube hubs. It's a rubber torsion style axle. The hubs uh, don't need any maintenance, but you do have to inspect them periodically. And it has a never adjust brake system. It's a 12 inch electric drum brake that self-adjust, but you still do need to inspect the brake linings, inspect the hardware periodically, but it is never adjusted. You got a shock absorber on each wheel of this trailer. And look at the nice detail here over this wheel, the wheel well trim here. This is all made at Airstream. It's extruded aluminum. Beautiful Alcoa aluminum uh, with a, a clear coat finish on board. All these rivets here are buck riveted in place by Two members at the factory, one on the outside and one on the inside holding the bucking tool. Uh, this window awning side part of the package. This covers the whole side from cap to cap. Not only shades your windows, but shades 
this whole part of the trailer really allows the trailer to run more efficient if you're out in direct sunlight. And to roll it up, you just undo the strap here and roll it up. And it has a travel latch for when you're driving down the highway so it doesn't pull out. But look at that metal wrap, it's very heavy duty. I'm gonna pull it out here to help shade us. Cooktop ventilation, we saw the grill on the inside. This is where I mentioned you have to open the louvers. You just push these both tabs up, and when you turn the fan on, it allows the vent out. Best practice is to make sure these are shut before you tow, and when it's in storage, so uh, if this got stuck open, and you don't have insects coming in the trailer, or pollen, or dust, or dirt. These are porthole windows right over the kitchen galley sink area. This is the furnace and the furnace exhaust. The furnace is controlled, we saw from the inside, but this is where it exhausts. Now you don't want to park next to a pile of leaves or any combustibles, it just gets very hot. And if uh, kids are playing around the trail, you want to point out to not to go near this area because it does get very hot. Beautiful Caravel medallion. It's all aluminum milled. This is the water heater. We saw the controls in the bathroom on the inside, but um, what happens when we hit those switches before is the gas valve opens, allows gas to flow through, mixes with combustible air, ignites here with the, ignition, with the igniter, and excess heat and exhaust comes out the top, and the tank reservoir is behind it underneath the bed. This is a pressure relief valve that if the tank pressure ever got too high, a relief out here instead of exploding. And you want to wipe this out periodically, and you never want to store any items in here. And for winterization, for draining down, there's a drain plug here on the lower left side. Just want to make sure this door is also secure when you're traveling. This is the VIN plate. This is one of the VIN locations with the tire size. Uh, these are load rate E tires, and we mentioned before it's 80 PSI. But if you ever question that, you can come right to this sticker here. It even tells you your rim size, so if you needed to know that information, it's on here as well. VIN number and the model that you have. Uh, so this is a good location to make sure you're mindful of knowing where the information is. These are your front running lights, LED, and they're amber color. This is the stainless steel wrap protectors. These wrap protectors are stainless steel and the body is aluminum. This is a little bit more resilient, but it's also heavier and more expensive to manufacture. So they give you this portion here. For any rocks that your vehicle kicks up while you're driving, it's gonna hit this instead of dinging the aluminum body. But it's also gapped from the body that allows some deflection if you hit some heavy debris in the road and that will allow it to deflect in and out without denting the body from behind. But because it's gapped from the body, you, there's stuff going to get back here, it's going to get dirty back there, so you got to be able to clean it. So Airstream puts this on a long hinge here, and there's three nuts you take off, and this could swing out so you could clean leaves and debris and clean the body behind it. Above that we have the solar stone guards. These are tinted and they're flexible. This protects your glass, your safety glass from rocks when you're driving on the highway. There's two tethers in the middle. Now this is the window that was right at the, the bed, at the side of the bed. You can spin the neural knob here on both sides and now you can clean your glass or you can open your window all three heights. These corner pieces are removable. You take a Phillips head screwdriver, turn a quarter turn, this will swing out and it lifts off. You put it on the ground then you can clean your glass as well. You want to make sure you take them off and you don't want to overextend them because you'll dent the body. And you want to make sure once you put them back in that they're fully secure because the wind could catch them and they'll bend your body as, uh, as well, the body panels. Lower this, you want to really make sure that you do put these tethers on because this is the first thing that's going to flip up if you're towing if it's not secured properly. Propane tanks are two 20-pound bottles. Colonial Airstream fills both of those bottles as part of our dealer prep, which is included in every transaction. To fill the bottles, we take this nut off, this threaded rod, and go all the way up to the top. And then we can lift the tank out of the cover out of the way. And it's very light, so if it's windy out, it could tip over, so just make sure you have a good grip on it. Then you can lift this out of the way, 
undo one of your propane tanks, make sure it's off first. And the, you can get it filled, or these are the 20 pound bottles, you could exchange them at a gas station. A little bit more convenient because of the size for exchanging versus finding a place that fills propane tanks. In today's day and age, there's less and less places out there that fill propane, most of them just do exchange. But once you have both tanks on, there's a, a regulator here that allows you to point to whichever bottle you want to utilize first. And there's a sight gauge here, right now it's red because the tanks are off, but when you turn the tanks on, if you have propane in the tanks, it'll turn green. And we're pointing to this bottle, so this is the bottle we're using first. I could shut this bottle off and I could manually switch it to this bottle if I wanted to, then that would turn green as well. But if that bottle was to empty, this would turn red. Now if you had both bottles on, there is an auto switch over. So if this bottle's empty, internally it would automatically switch to this bottle so you don't run out of heat or, or you, it, you don't have to come out and make any adjustments. So you decide whether you want to use one bottle at a time or turn both on and let it do the auto switch over. Before you tow the trailer, you want to make sure both your tanks are off. You always want to make sure they're off when you're towing for safety reasons. Slip the bottle cover on here and make sure it's nice and tight and secure before you tow the trailer. You don't want this body, uh, bottle cover uh, swinging around when you're driving. Okay, electric hitch jack up front. You could extend, which is lift, retract, which is lower. That's to get it on and off your tow vehicle. There's a light out of here that illuminates this area at night. And it comes with a manual crank tool, just in case you had hitch jack failure or battery failure, you can manually crank the trailer up and down by hand. There's a bubble level up top, which will give you an idea if you're close to level with the trailer. Most people use a small torpedo or carpenter's level, and they put it on the floor of the trailer to see if they're level. It needs a seven-way wiring harness on your vehicle. That would be six spades and one pin. You want, it's highly recommended that your vehicle has a 12 volt charge lead hooked up as well. So when you're driving, your alternator will charge the batteries of the trailer. And you're going to be required to have an electric brake controller installed in your vehicle. Whether it's available as a factory op option from your vehicle manufacturer or you do an aftermarket or a wireless one, uh, that's going to be needed. This trailer has the uh, electric brakes, so it has an electric trailer breakaway cable. You never want to pull this and leave it out because with this out, the magnets are on for the trailer, the brakes are fully engaged, and we're rapidly draining the battery in the trailer. Also, if you leave this out long enough, it could burn the magnets out in the brake drum. So it's very uh, important not to pull this out and leave it out. But you do want to inspect your cable periodically, make sure it's not frayed, because this is going to get secured to the, v to the tow vehicle. And if the tow vehicle trailer ever separated accidentally when you're driving, this will pull out and activate the trailer brakes so your trailer doesn't pass you in the highway. So this is just for safety item, but it has to be securely hooked to your vehicle. You also want to securely hook and crisscross your safety chains to the, the tow vehicle's hitch receiver. This takes a 2 and 5 16 inch ball, and uh, we highly recommend some type of weight distribution kit with sway control. That will help balance the trailer, keep you level, throw some weight back onto your front axle of your tow vehicle, and if the trailer ever got into a sway, it would help control it and hopefully correct it for you. Colonial Airstream gives you a hitch coupler lock, so no one can get up and lift this up and get a ball underneath it while it's parked. We have now the new Demco Easy Lift. Uh, this is a composite hitch coupler lock. So instead of the, the steel style that will rub metal to metal, uh, this is composite, so you don't have to worry about this area getting some surface rust over time. On the side here, we have a boxed frame. So this is a steel frame. It's boxed instead of a C-channel, so it's very rigid frame structure. Cool. Airstream gives you a propane quick disconnect. So you could hook this end into a compatible low pressure grill. So you want to make sure your grill is compatible running a low pressure. Hook that in and then what you want to do is take this little dust cap off and then you could slip this in, slide this back, and that snaps in place, that's secure, and then you could turn your propane on and that will give you low pressure for your grill so you could cook and it's hooked right into these propane tanks. And um, the hose is purposely a certain size because they don't want you to be tempted 
with a 12 foot hose to bring it around and start cooking underneath the awning because you could accidentally have a fire and light the awning material up. So this is uh, this length so you're only uh, contained to cook in front of the trailer in a certain area. The batteries, they're uh, group 24 series 12 volt batteries, come standard with interstate lead acid. When you get the solar charging system, Airstream upgrades you to Lifeline Absorbed Glass Mat Group 24 Series, which are maintenance free and they're 80 amp hours a piece. Colonial Airstream gives you the lock for the battery box here too, so your batteries don't get stolen. Batteries are in parallel, so it's giving you a capacity of 12 volt total. Spare tire, you could lift your electric hitch jack up a little bit higher to gain you a little bit better access to it. You want to pull this pin out. Then you want to slide this other one across. And that will give you access to drop the tire down. And if the tire is cradled in place, so it's not clamped or bolted in place, it's cradled in there. And you could lift your hitch jack up a little bit higher to gain access to it. And again, remember to check your tire pressure, not only on the tires of the trailer, but your spare tire. And this is on a steel wheel, so there's a different torque specification. You'll look up in your owner's manual to follow the torque specification for steel versus aluminum rim. Next to that, on the bottom of the battery box, you can see the actual aluminum VIN plate of the trailer. Get this spare tire back up. You want to make sure that's fully secure before you tow away it on the side of the road. Put the pin in the locket in place. All right, we'll step back and take a look at the roof line of the trailer. There's a radio antenna in the rear cap. In front of that is your 14 by 14 fantastic fan, Dometic air conditioner. We have a antenna for the television, another 14 by 14 fantastic fan, and the optional 90 watt solar panel. Let's take this uh, beautiful Zipti awning out. You spin the wheel locks, this is the tool that comes with the trailer. Once you get them loose enough, you can push in on the outer bar and that will drop right down in place. We're going to close the entry door. Do this one here. There's a travel latch that you twist as well. And then you're going to use the tool to grab the strap in the middle and pull. This is spring loaded, so it's going to want to go right back up. So once you get it down, you want to hold it the whole entire time until you get to the end. And then what you want to do is you want to brace it with one arm and grab this rafter arm that sits loosely on this perch. When the awning goes up, this spring here colla uh, collapses and allows this bar to have tension so it doesn't come loose. But now that the awning's down, it's nice and loose and it has to snap right in at the end of the roller wheel. Don't be tempted to put it here. It looks great there, but it will damage your awning and bend the bars. It has to go here at the end of the roller wheel. Now once it's in place, I can't let go. The awning still wants to go back up. So there's a spring in here and there's a pin that sits in little notches. We have to load some tension into the upper rafter arm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the awning down and pull towards me. I'm going to pull this towards me until that locks in place. Now I can let go. I'm going to walk down to the other end. I'm going to do the same exact thing and lock it in place. Now I have the awning all locked and secured. Make sure if someone's inside the trailer that you let them know you're operating the awning because it's not a good time to open the door. I could catch the awning material. Now we're going to slide this square tube out of this square tube. This expands up and down. And there's a neural knob here with pins. There's four holes total. It's easier to come inside the awning and put your palm on the awning roller wheel and pull this out. Now if you pull and you twist the two square tubes, you can lock it in place. You got to keep this straight and the awning will glide nice and smooth. And we got to get up to the fourth hole because we're by the door, the rhyme. Four by the door. Very important to be at the highest setting by the door so the door doesn't rub on the awning material. On this side, 
we could take it and we could put it on whatever angle we decide, or we can even it out and put it on the fourth hole. Once you have the awning out, you can take this and roll it up nice and neat and stick it in this pouch here. And now that the awning's out, you can see the beautiful LED light strip that's dimmable underneath the whole entire length of the awning. This window here is the window at the head of the bed, and this window is the window behind the dinette. There's a storage compartment here. This is your outside storage compartment with its insulated, weather sealed, lockable matting on the inside. Vinyl floor throughout the whole trailer goes underneath every, all the furniture, but the matting protects it. And there's a LED light here off to the side. And this compartment goes all the way to the front of the trailer and stops right here. So you can put a lot of outdoor gear in this compartment here. And when you close the door and you push back, this squeezes the lock nice and tight and you can lock with the key. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tour of the all new 2020 Airstream Caravel 22FB. This Airstream is available at Colonial Airstream. Our website is colonialairstream.com. Our telephone number is 800-265-9019. You can follow me on social media. I'm Colonial Patrick and I'll see you soon.